Picture it, 2023, a time of massive disruption in the entertainment world, most notably in how we consume our movies. With so many at-home streaming options vying for our attention alongside those weekend movie theater blockbuster excursions, the choices can be overwhelming. And amidst keeping up with them all, there might be films that may not have gotten the attention they deserved. So in no particular order, let's take a look at these must-see underrated movies. Number one, A History of Violence from 2005. A History of Violence is a smart, compelling, deliberately slow, and very violent movie. But then this was made by David Cronenberg, the filmmaker known for his bizarre and disturbing body horrors. Viggo Mortensen, in one of his career best performances, is Tom, an everyday Joe in a small Midwestern town. He owns a diner and has a loving wife and two kids. But when two mafia-looking strangers come wandering in and accuse him of being the most insane, bloodthirsty mobster who went into hiding years ago, let's say things go sideways. Now, History of Violence exaggerates on the violence, but thankfully this film is so much more than that. It's a meditation on the mind, the trust between husband and wife, and the horrors one man can inflict on another. Number two, Sin City from 2005. Based on Frank Miller's masterpiece of a graphic novel, Sin City was director Robert Rodriguez's passion project. Rodriguez is best known for his love of hard-boiled, neo-noir tales, and so he brings the right tone to visualize the harsh yet stylish world of Frank Miller's imagination. In fact, Rodriguez has turned comic book storytelling into a beautiful art. This movie runs on different chapters, connecting characters all in one setting. And it's packed with superstar actors playing intriguing characters in the rundown, corrupt world. Though the film is more about style than story, Rodriguez and Miller still offer a very cynical and shocking view about politics and religion. Sin City is a wildly fun crime epic, maybe even a modern noir classic. Number three, Children of Men from 2006. It's set in the year 2027. Humankind has become infertile and the world is in the midst of social collapse. When one of the last children born on Earth is murdered, his death sets off massive protests and violent conflicts between sectarian groups. Clive Owen stars as Theo, a bureaucrat who is thrown into the midst of this chaos. He soon finds a refugee and a pregnant woman named Key, and they embark on a journey to safety. Warning, this movie is bleak, feels timely, and hits you in the gut. But in the end, it gets you back up with a sense of renewed hope. Number four, Drive from 2011. Danish filmmaker Refn evidently loves film noir as well as movies dealing with the criminal underworld. His unflinching neo-noir work, Pusher Trilogy, brilliantly updated the classic noir template. For Drive, Refn was inspired by the underrated neo-noir films like Two Lane Blacktop from 1971 and Thief from 1981. Here, Ryan Gosling plays a stunt driver who, after befriending his neighbor and forming a romance with her, becomes involved in protecting her and her son from the mob. Gosling has starred in movies like The Notebook, La La Land, and many other popular favorites. But Drive has the potential to be a fave too, given its uniqueness and how it seems to take an art house narrative approach. It also boasts some of the greatest car chases in film history. Drive is an earth-shattering, soulful crime epic. Number five, Take Shelter from 2011. Now, writer-director Jeff Nichols' entire filmography, not just Take Shelter, deserves more appreciation. Nichols is consistently brilliant in exploring the social realities of modern America. In Take Shelter, he uses an individual's growing paranoia tendencies to subtly deal with issues such as the global financial collapse and climate change crisis. The film revolves around working class couple Curtis and Samantha who live with their six-year-old daughter in Ohio. Curtis starts experiencing apocalyptic visions of impending doom. The foreboding visions push Curtis to build a storm shelter. However, his wife and others around him fear that Curtis is losing his grip on reality. Michael Shannon's intense performance and Nichols's narrative ambiguity keep us anxious until the end, a nail biter. 
And we're moving on to number six. We need to talk about Kevin from 2011. Here's Scottish filmmaker Lynn Ramsey's masterpiece. We Need to Talk About Kevin deals with a difficult mother-son relationship. This story follows Eva, an accomplished travel writer who gets married to the gentle and laid-back Franklin. Soon, Eva has a son, Kevin. She sets aside her career and ambitions to bring up her son, but the mother and son have difficulties bonding. Kevin grows up to be a moody, deceitful teenager, and a few days before his 16th birthday, he commits a despicable and unfathomable crime. We Need to Talk About Kevin offers a disturbing look at parental anxiety and idealized notions of motherhood. Tilda Swinton's terrific performance takes us on an absolutely roller coaster of emotions. Number seven, The Tree of Life from 2011. The Tree of Life is the most ambitious, passionate piece in Terence Malick's oeuvre, which includes masterpieces Days of Heaven from 1978 and The Thin Red Line from 1988. And hopefully the director will be remembered for his brilliantly humanistic perspectives in The Tree of Life. Through the lives of a Texas-based family in the 1960s, Malik shows us the beauty of life on a universal and spiritual level. The cinematography is stunning, and if you're a romantic, this movie will move you and give you a renewed sense of optimism and appreciation for life. The Tree of Life doesn't offer any answers to questions that it raises about existence and human condition, yet it's a gorgeous film to look at which would make even the greatest blockbuster look feeble. Number 8, The Master from 2012. Paul Thomas Anderson has made some absolute masterpieces. Think There Will Be Blood from 2007 and more recently Licorice Pizza from 2021. But The Master is a top contender too. The film is inspired by the early life of Ron L. Hubbard, the charismatic founder of Scientology Church. Joaquin Phoenix stars as World War II vet Freddie Quell. He gives a career best performance which outranks the likes of Philip Seymour Hoffman and Amy Adams who portray leaders of a Scientology-like cult that recruits Freddy. Subsequently, Freddy finds a purpose and discovers a sense of belonging. The film is a haunting depiction of the struggles of a lost and traumatized individual such as Freddy, and Joaquin Phoenix miraculously brings the character to life. Number 9, Cloud Atlas from 2012. Enter a film that polarized critics and emphatically failed at the box office. But Cloud Atlas is an original piece of cinema that deserves viewing, perhaps multiple times. It's a sci-fi fantasy weaving together six stories. Every story takes place in a unique time and period set between the 19th century and 23rd century. Yes, that's the distant past and the distant future. Now prepare to feel disoriented, fascinated, and possibly frustrated, but it's worth it. The overriding theme of Cloud Atlas is that actions of a few individuals influence and impact the larger society. While the struggles of each individual are different, all seek emancipation from tyrannical power structures or systems. The film contemplates on how self-determination and suffering have always been part of human society. And we're almost there. Number 10, Ruby Sparks from 2012. Quirky, free-spirited women have long been an archetype in Hollywood romance dramas and rom-coms. From Audrey Hepburn to Natalie Portman, several actors have played these eccentric, magical characters. Ruby Sparks mesmerizingly deconstructs this manic, pixie dream girl trope. Paul Dano plays Calvin, a socially awkward author suffering from writer's block. Calvin hasn't yet moved on from his ex-girlfriend. In a fit of inspiration, he creates a character named Ruby, who he describes as the perfect woman. To his surprise, Ruby suddenly appears in his life as a real person, most unexpected. And Calvin must navigate the challenges of their relationship as he struggles to control her actions and behavior. Ruby Sparks is most definitely an interesting critique of modern day relationships. Number 11, Locke from 2013. Buckle up because screenwriter Stephen Knight's second directorial effort is entirely set inside a car. A well-respected family man named Ivan Locke has the terrible night of his life. Over the course of a single lonely drive, Locke is behind the wheel and talks to different people on the phone in order to sort out the crisis in both his personal and professional life. 
Tom Hardy expertly plays the titular character. Hardy was largely known for playing a villain in 2012's The Dark Knight Rises and as the stoic hero in George Miller's Mad Max Fury Road from 2015. Here he plays a simple man and exhibits a remarkable range of emotions. However, the highlight of Locke is Knight's screenplay. He keeps us engrossed in the drama even in the limited visual setting. Knight's direction also supplies impressive visual momentum. Number 12, Enemy from 2013. Denis Villeneuve was best known for his bold, artful indies as well as Hollywood projects. He made a powerful low-budget drama on school shooting titled Polytechnique in 2009. Villeneuve also spearheaded multi-million dollar projects like Blade Runner 2049 from 2017 and Dune from 2021. Enemy is perhaps his most puzzling and underrated project. The story centers around a timid, mild-mannered history teacher, Adam, actor Jake Gyllenhaal. While watching a movie, Adam discovers his perfect doppelganger, an assertive and strong bit part actor. The discovery leads to an identity crisis full of complex twists. Hmm, this great movie should be watched for Gyllenhaal's riveting performance and Villeneuve's spellbinding aesthetic framework. In fact, Enemy will remind you of David Lynch's phenomenal psychological horrors. And here we are at number 13, 99 Homes from 2014. American filmmaker Ramin Barani often makes movies on one of the most underrepresented sections of the American populace, the working class. 99 Homes was made with Hollywood stars Andrew Garfield, Laura Dern, and Michael Shannon. The film is set in the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis and follows Dennis Garfield, a construction worker and single father who was evicted from his home by ruthless real estate broker Rick Shannon. Desperate to get his family back into their home, Dennis takes a job where he becomes embroiled in the corrupt and unethical world of foreclosure evictions. But as his business becomes successful, Dennis must confront the moral implications of his actions and the cost of his ambition. There we have it, films that prove that underrated can still most definitely mean quality. Now what are some of your favorite films on this list? Let's talk in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to Flickside for more great film content.